More on the minutes from the Fed's September meeting. Let's now welcome in Brett Ryan, Deutsche Bank Securities senior U.S. economist. Brett, it's always good to see you. Uh, so as Jennifer was just noting there, it seems like we did have a, a lively debate, a healthy debate here, Brett. Some officials, it sounded like, would have preferred a, a smaller size cut, thought that would have made more sense in terms of just kind of a, a gradual path, a gradual trajectory of easing. But obviously, you know, a, a substantial majority, it sounds like, didn't want that outsized cut. What do you make it of all, Brett? Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Josh and, and Jennifer did a good, good job of summarizing. One thing I would add to that is that to the chorus of those that were arguing for the 25 basis points, there was some concern about uh, over easing of financial conditions and that potentially doing some damage uh, to the, traje the trajectory for inflation. So it was definitely a healthy debate. It appears that, you know, I mean, 25 basis points was mentioned four times in the participant discussion versus 50 basis points once um, outside of the substantial majority. So it does speak to, I think, uh, the the committee's desire going forward, uh, absent a substantial shock that they're going to be moving at 25 basis points, um, you know, for the, at the next se uh, several meetings. Right now, the the Fed funds futures curve is is almost exactly in line with our with our forecast, uh, where we expect twenty five basis points at the at every meeting through March, and then switching to a quarterly pace, um, settling in at three point three seven five by September of next year. But also note that one of the one of the points made during that discussion was that it's the destination that matters ultimately, and when you're uncertain about that destination and how restrictive you may be in an environment of still elevated inflation with some upside risk still remaining, that it's best to go at a, at a gradual pace as they typically have done. So that makes sense in our view. And you know the data are gonna be messy over the next uh, month or so with, with uh, the unfortunate weather impacts of the, of the hurricanes. So it's I think the Fed's gonna to wanna to keep a steady course. We'll talk about the read through of those idiosyncratic events in a second here, Brett, but I'm curious, could we get a no cut November? I don't think that's necessarily on the table. I think you need a, a large upside surprise in inflation tomorrow, which, you know, it, it doesn't look likely to happen. Uh, we're expecting about a 30 basis point, uh, 30 basis points on core CPI. Uh, you would need to get something double that, I think, to really for the committee to really question something. Um, the the labor market data that we got, and that's one of the reasons why the minutes are a little bit stale, is that you know this was before the strong jobs report last Friday. Now the jobs report last Friday doesn't necessarily speak to a reacceleration of the labor market. It more eases concerns about weakness over the prior couple of months. It basically was was a bit of a rebound. And when you smooth through that, you get the story of, yes, it's still a, a cooling labor market, but there isn't any further deterioration in the labor market. And that was what the main benchmark was for Chair Powell with respect to further 50 basis point rate cuts. But we're not at the point of discussing whether or not they're actually going at all. I think you need another, you know, a few, a few more really strong employment reports for the committee to question the level of restrictiveness. 